and I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty, be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else, and my people shall never be ashamed. Israelites, there have never been a time in this world where a majority of the population served the God of Israel. The Most High could barely get his people that is called by his name to serve him in sincerity. The very people he has done countless miracles in their sight and they still forsake him. Do you honestly believe over 3 billion people in this generation serve the God of Israel in the spirit and in truth? This is a serious question I am asking you. The religion called Christianity proclaimed they have replaced the Israelites. The Israelites are the people the Most High have chosen to show himself strong throughout the generation until the last and final day. The scriptures call the Israelites the salt of the earth. They are also the light to this dark world. Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have but lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. The Israelite bloodline is a sacred bloodline specifically chosen by the Most High to do His will on the earth. The Israelite bloodline is not a multicultural bloodline. The Israelite bloodline is a specific family clan the Most High created starting with Abraham. The Most High called Abraham and made an everlasting covenant with Abraham to make him a father to many nations. Presently in the beast culture, many people don't know the difference between nationality, race, and bloodline. The spiritual wickedness in high places use place of birth and race to determine a person's bloodline. The Satans did a very good job at distorting how the Most High identified the people he created. This generation identify a person based on race and place of birth. The Most High identify every family clan by bloodline. Each bloodline is a family clan. Bloodline is not based on race and place of birth. The Most High does nothing according to appearance because all of the descendants of Adam share the same appearance. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Israelites, DNA plays a major role in determining a person's bloodline. The Satans used the seed of the fallen to infiltrate majority of Noah's son's bloodline through colonization. A person spoil his or her bloodline when they mingle their seed with other seed that is not within their own bloodline. That is why the Most High warned the Israelites not to mingle their seed. Anyone who spoil their seed creates a new bloodline. They do not transfer the bloodline of their father to their children if they don't marry within their bloodline. Isaac, Abraham's second son, is not a progenitor to any bloodline because he married within the Hebrew bloodline. Isaac transferred the Hebrew bloodline to his sons Esau and Jacob. The Most High decided to do something new when he created the Israelite bloodline within the Hebrew bloodline. All of Jacob's wives were of the Hebrew bloodline. When the Most High decided to create the Holy Seed, he blessed Jacob and changed Jacob's name to Israel. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men, 
and hast prevailed. When the Most High changed Jacob's name to Israel, that is when the Most High began the process of creating the Holy Israelite bloodline. Remember, Jacob inherited the promise the Most High made to Abraham. Esau is the progenitor to a bloodline because he didn't marry within the Hebrew bloodline. In addition, Esau's sons married women from various bloodlines. That is why Esau's seed is spoiled. When the Most High said he would make Abraham a father to many nations, the workers of iniquity used this covenant to remove the special anointing the Most High put on his people, the Israelites, to include all people. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Religion used the verse you heard in the book of Genesis that said, I will make you a father to many nations to bring people who are not a people into the covenant promise the Most High made with the Israelites. The workers of iniquity used this scripture as well as other scriptures in the beast religion to replace the Israelites with spiritual Israel. When the Most High said that he will make Abraham a father to many nations, he fulfilled that promise when he blessed Abraham with eight sons. A bloodline is a family clan. Bloodline and race is not the same thing. Race is based on skin color and place of birth, while a bloodline is based on your family lineage. For example, in the beast system, I am a black woman. There are countless black women from around the world. My family were enslaved in the Caribbean, while there are black women who are descendants of slaves from Europe, the USA, and all over the world. There are women who are labeled black and they are not descendants of slaves. Because we share similar appearance, we are all labeled black women. Despite being labeled black women because of our shared appearance, not all black women descend from the same bloodline. I am a black woman who is the daughter of Zion, an Israelite woman. While another black woman can come from the bloodline of Ishmael, making her an Ishmaelite woman. She can be a black woman and descend from the bloodline of Cush, making her a Cushite woman. There are black women who descend from Emelech. She would be from the Emelkite bloodline. Although we are all black, we don't come from the same bloodline. Today, the workers of iniquity have replaced bloodline with race and blurred the lines. Therefore, everyone identified themselves with race and place of birth. Because we have been identifying ourselves with race and place of birth, Satan was able to conceal who we are in the scriptures. If our bloodline was never forgotten by our people, when we read the scriptures, we could easily identify with the scriptures. However, due to a lack of knowledge, the truth was hidden from us. Israelites, that is why it was important for our ancestors to transfer our cultured heritage to the next generation like the Most High command of them. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. Because our ancestors failed to transfer the knowledge over the years, our people forgot their Israelite culture. If everyone who descend from Noah's three sons knew their bloodline, they can easily read about their family in the scriptures. Because the workers of iniquity replaced bloodline with race, nobody knows their bloodline. The heathens use race in place of birth to give themselves a heritage. Today, the way the heathens try to deny our Israelite heritage is by saying the Israelites were Middle Eastern with an olive-colored complexion. They go as far as to say the Messiah was Middle Eastern as well. There's no such people called Middle Eastern in the scriptures. The modern people they labeled Middle Eastern today are the children of the colonizers. They are a mixed race people. Anyone who is of an olive complexion would be black because olives are black. To put an end to all of the speculation, give the modern Middle Eastern people a DNA test. 
let their DNA expose them. They will soon come to the realization of the multiple seed that made the modern Middle Eastern people of today. Majority of their DNA will come from Europe. A small amount of their DNA will come from the indigenous black people that came from the land they claim to be theirs. A bloodline consists of the progenitor of the bloodline and his wives. Jacob, the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline and the four women that gave birth to his 12 sons are a bloodline. The Most High did not play when it came to the Holy Seed. The Most High gatekeep whom he wanted to use to form the bloodline. The Most High made sure no Canaanite blood entered the Holy Seed. Then Judah married his son Onan to Tamar, saying he shall raise seed unto his brother. Yet him also did God kill because of his evil deeds, on account of Jacob's curse that no Canaanitish seed should mingle with his own. So God would not let any of it mingle with that of Jacob the righteous. She was of a Canaanitish family, and Jacob's heart suffered much on that account. And he said to Judah, his son, who had married that wife, the God of Abraham and of Isaac would not allow the seed of this Canaanitish woman to mingle with my seed. The reason the Satans use race in place of birth to give the children the colonizers produced with the indigenous black women land inheritance. When you identify yourself by race, Whatever country you were born in becomes your nationality. You will identify with that country's culture. Bloodline is based on your family lineage. You can be born anywhere in this world as long as you come from that particular family clan, which is your bloodline. That is how the Most High identified the people he created in his image and likeness by their bloodline. You can be an Israelite born in Europe, the Caribbean, Asia, India, and Australia. As long as you marry within the Israelite bloodline, you're an Israelite regardless of the place of birth. You can be born from the Middle East and have no connection to the Israelite bloodline. You can be born in Jerusalem and you're not a descendant of the Israelites. You have to descend from that specific family clan to be considered an Israelite. Being born in the Middle East doesn't make you an Israelite. The Bible in the book of Judges made it very clear that the Assyrian king took heathens from other nations and bloodlines to dwell in the promised land when the Most High removed his people from his presence. The heathens that occupied the promised land were dying because they didn't know how to serve the Most High. The Assyrian king found an Israelite priest to teach these heathens our customs and how to serve the God of Israel to live on the promised land. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let him teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. The scriptures made it very clear that it's another group of people that came to live in the region the ancient Israelites called home. With the heathens trying to use the modern people who live in the promised land as Israelites are in error. The Most High removed his people from the promised land when he scattered them all over the world. The Middle Eastern people they use to confirm the Messiah and the Israelites' appearance have no affiliation or connection with the ancient Israelites. Don't listen to their lies, nor give them the time of day. I said to you many years ago that history will correct itself in due time. With the vast amount of truth, the Most High is pouring out into the world by exposing the secrets, the truth is correcting history. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. As you can see, Israelites, the Most High is very strict with the Holy Seed. The Most High don't want the Holy Seed to mingle with the other bloodlines. For the religious leaders of today to cast away the holy people and proclaim the Most High replace his people with the heathen nations who are an enemy are lying. The Most High did not anoint these heathens, nor appoint them to do his will. That is why their doctrines are doctrines of devils that don't correspond with the scriptures in the Bible. The Israelite bloodline is sacred to the Most High. 
The Most High did not cast out his people. The workers of iniquity in this world cast out his people. The God of Israel did not cast out his people. A people that is called by his name. A people he surnamed. A group of people that represent him in this world. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. For Jacob my servant's sake, and Israel mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. The workers of iniquity wants to convince us that the Israelite bloodline is multicultural. That is false. If a bloodline is multicultural, then that bloodline is spoiled. Esau's seed was spoiled because he was wicked and his children married women and men from various bloodlines. The Most High used Abraham's eight sons to make him a father to many nations. The workers of iniquity in Christianity proclaim they are Abraham's descendants since the Most High said he would make him a father to many nations. Abraham have many descendants today because of his children who were fruitful. And think not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. But I say unto you, the God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. Abraham is not the father to every single nation of this world. Only the nations his eight sons fathered. Also, you can be a descendant of Abraham and you're not an Israelite. Ishmael is Abraham's firstborn son. The Most High didn't choose him to create the Holy Seed. The Most High specifically chose Isaac. From Isaac, he chose Jacob and his descendants to create the Holy Seed. The Most High didn't forget about Ishmael. Twelve princes came from Ishmael's bloodline. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant will I establish with Isaac, which Sarah shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. You can be a descendant of Abraham and not an Israelite. The Most High made the everlasting covenant with Abraham and transferred the promise to Isaac. From Isaac, he transferred the covenant to Jacob, the progenitor to the Israelite bloodline. The Israelite bloodline is a real people that still exists until this day. With Christians believing they have replaced the Israelites, the apple of the Most High's eyes, they are not reading their scriptures. I also believe the heathen Christians covet the promises the Most High made to the Israelites. That is why the heathens wants to strip the Israelites of their culture to take their heritage for themselves. No matter what they do, the Most High will always choose the Israelites and the righteous who serve him in the spirit and in truth. You don't have to be an Israelite to serve the Father in the spirit and in truth. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children. But in Isaac shall thy seed be called, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. The covenant the Most High made with Abraham was transferred to Isaac, Abraham's second son. Ishmael is Abraham's first son. After the Most High transferred the everlasting covenant to Isaac, and Sarah, Abraham's first wife, transitioned to the afterlife, Abraham took a second wife and had six sons with her. None of the sons Abraham had with his second wife Keturah and the concubine, the mother to Ishmael, were chosen. Only Isaac, Sarah's only son. And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. But unto the sons of the concubines which Abraham had, Abraham gave gifts. And sent them away from Isaac his son while he yet lived eastward unto the east country. 
Christians really need to pick up their Bible and read the scriptures for themselves. Your pastors who are high level workers of iniquity teach lies. Read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit. Allow the scriptures to speak in order to hear what the Father is saying to this generation at this time. The scriptures in the book of Peter said that the Israelites are a peculiar people. The book of Amos went as far as to say the Israelites are the only family the Most High knows. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore I will punish you for all your iniquities. The Most High said in the book of Amos that the Israelites are the only family that he knows. The Israelite bloodline is a family clan, not a multicultural bloodline. Today, the mother harlot, the Roman Catholic Church, said the Most High, the God of Israel, have replaced his people with all people. Israelites, when have religion ever taught truth? I hope you're starting to see how Christianity, the most popular religion in the world, don't truly have over 3 billion people serving the God of Israel. Matter of fact, never have the population of the righteous outnumbered the wicked. The Most High always had to look for an individual he could show himself strong through to get the attention of the people who were lost in idolatry in every generation. Majority of the world worship idols and they continue to worship idols until this day. Let us go back to the beginning when Adam and Eve began to multiply on the earth. The first man born, Cain, rebelled against the Most High. Cain killed his brother Abel when they were teenagers. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. And it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and slew him. The Most High blessed Adam and Eve with a third son called Seth. Seth and Cain's children populated the world before the flood. The Most High warned Seth to separate his children from the children of Cain. Cain's children were known as the sinners. Our fathers, who were the head of the family in their generations, honored the Most High to separate Cain's children from Seth. However, during the time of Jared, when the population of the children of Cain and Seth began to multiply, Satan influenced Seth's children to join Cain's children in their abominations. After Seth's children transgressed, the fallen watchers began to take the daughters of men for wives and produce the other species of mankind. When the Nephilim walked this earth, the earth was full of violence. Mankind's wickedness was out of control. The Most High decided to cleanse the earth from its wickedness by sending the flood. The Most High preserved Noah and his family to repopulate the earth. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. The scriptures confirm that every inclination of man's heart was evil all the time. From the very beginning, the children of men were influenced by the Satans. Through the abominations the fallen angels taught mankind, the earth was filled with violence and wickedness. The people served idols and did all sorts of perversions. The Most High sent the flood to cleanse the earth from its filthiness. You would think that the first man, Adam, and his family would serve the Most High who created them from the very beginning. They were deceived like everyone else to rebel against the Most High. When Adam and Eve failed to uphold the laws of the garden, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It covers the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? From the very beginning, the earth was given into the hands of the wicked. The scriptures inform us in the book of Ephesians that principalities, dark powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places control this earth. 
These powers are whom we fight against every day. The first family failed to upkeep the laws of the Most High. Their children also struggled to serve the Most High in every generation. Although Adam and Eve being the first of our kind, they were knowledgeable about their origins. They knew the Most High who created them. The Most High gave to Adam the gift of prophecy. The Most High talked with Adam. Adam prophesied to his children. Despite his wisdom, it didn't stop his children from rebelling against the Most High. It didn't stop his children from serving idols. During the generation before the flood, the Most High raised leaders within Adam's bloodline to shepherd the minority few people who followed and served the Most High. Adam was first. After Adam came Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, Enoch, Jared, Lamech, Noah, Shem, Melchizedek, and Abraham. They were amongst the leaders the Most High used to show himself strong through. The Most High used them to do his will on the earth as well as to tell the people the will of the Most High for his people. Each of these leaders didn't have a large group of people in the billions following after them. Never in history have the population of the righteous outnumbered the wicked. Israelites, it's very important for you to understand that narrow is the way that leads to life. Only a few will find that road. Because straight is the gate. And narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. As you can see, in every generation, it was a few people that served the God of Israel in the spirit and in truth. Never at any time have all people served the God of Israel on earth, not even in this generation. The reason the sin of idolatry overtake majority of the people in the beast system, every bloodline had their own God they served. Not every bloodline served the God of Israel. These nations served their own gods and did the will of their gods. Albeit, every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon made Sukkoth Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima. And the Abites made Nibhaz and Tartak, and the Savarvites burnt their children in fire to Adramalek and Anamalek, the gods of Sephavaim. Satan was able to deceive many bloodlines to serve idols. That is why the Most High created and chose the Israelites and called himself the God of Israel. We often see in the scriptures the Most High calling himself the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Never in the scriptures have the Most High called himself a God to all people. He was the God of Israel, the only family clan that he knew. The goal of the Most High for the Holy Seed was to teach the other nations about the God of Israel. The Israelites are the only family that was given the laws and commandments written by the Most High. And he gave unto Moses, when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, two tables of testimony, tables of stone, written with the finger of God. The Most High command the Holy Seed to be an example to the rest of the world. The other nations don't know the God of Israel. If these nations don't know the God of Israel, how could the Most High replace his people with the other nations who don't know his statutes, commandments, and laws? Remember, it was the Assyrian king that found a Levite priest to teach the heathens about the Israelite culture. Then the king of Assyria commanded, saying, Carry thither one of the priests whom ye brought from thence, and let them go and dwell there, and let them teach them the manner of the God of the land. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel, and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Today, the heathens are teaching the Israelites and the rest of the world about the God of Israel. How can the heathens teach us about our God? Outside of the Israelites, no heathen is qualified to teach anyone about the God of Israel. 
He is the God of Israel. That is why he is called as such. The heathens have possession of our original scrolls in their vaults. Because the Holy Spirit abide with us, the Israelites don't need the scrolls to know the Most High. The heathens have stolen and burned our books in multiple generations. The Most High find a way to restore them. The Holy Spirit is key in the end times. That is why the Most High said the hour have come for the true worshipers to worship in spirit and in truth. Yet the writers and the interpreters destroyed the writings and the Hebrews changed the writings and the Syrians and the Greeks rejected many sections of those writings so that the children of the people could not ascertain their kindred. Neither could men or women hear who were their fathers or their mothers, except very few of them. And this was because of the laying waste of Jerusalem, so that until this day, nothing certain is found among the writings, except the chief writings alone, writings that had been translated before the ruin of Jerusalem. Then came the Spirit of God upon him, and the same Spirit spake through him that had spoken through the prophets. And he wrote the law and the prophets and made them new a second time. And the fire which he found in the censer is the divine fire that was all the time in the house of God. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. The heathens need our scrolls to plagiarize our ancestors' writings to deceive us. Religion used the likeness of the God of Israel to get the whole world to worship the God of this world. The Satans used religion to corrupt the words of the Most High and change the narrative of the reason the Most High created the Holy Seed. That way, the people would fight amongst themselves. Every nation had their God they worship and serve. Remember the story of Jonah running to Tarshish because he didn't want to do the will of the Most High? When the Most High caused the sea to rage violently, causing Jonah and the other men to fear, the man in the boat said, every man should cry out to their God for help. Then the mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship and he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, what meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us, that we perish not. Each sailor on the boat had their own God they worship and serve. If the people in Jonah's generation served the God of Israel, they would have cried out to the God of Israel to save them. However, the sailors cried out to their idols for help. When their idols didn't respond and only the Most High responded, the sailors knew Jonah's God was the one true God. Religion tried to make it appear as if the God of Israel had been interacting with all people from the beginning. Religion made it seem as if the other nations were knowledgeable about the God of Israel. The sailors in the story about Jonah, as well as countless other stories in the scriptures, confirm many people don't know nor do they serve the God of Israel. The Most High had been warning his people, the Israelites, about the idols of the heathens throughout the scriptures. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. Israelites, nothing have changed from the other nations serving their gods in this generation. That is why there are many religions. Christianity is a religion that have multiple denominations with various beliefs. Despite being the largest religion in the world, None of its believers are on one accord. That is why there's multiple denominations in Christianity. Israelites, that is one of the main reasons why the God of Israel cannot be the God Christians serve. The Most High said a kingdom or household that is divided cannot stand. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Christianity is a religion where each denomination have its own beliefs. The Protestant believers split from the mother harlot. Despite splitting from the Roman Catholic Church, Rome continued to influence every Protestant church in this world. The Christian faith is very divided. It is said that Christianity have over 3 billion believers. Israelites, 
Never in history have 3 billion people served the God of Israel. Not in the time of Noah, not in the time of Abraham, not in the time of Jacob, not in the time when the word of God became flesh and walk among us as the son of man. The Most High couldn't find 10 righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. If the Most High could have found 10 righteous, he would have saved those cities. And he said, Oh, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak yet but this once. Peradventure, ten shall be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for ten's sake. Abraham bargained with the Most High not to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot, his nephew, lived in Sodom. Abraham said to the Most High, Will you destroy the righteous with the wicked? Abraham said, if you can find 50 within the city, will you destroy the city? The angels that spoke with Abraham said, if he finds 50 righteous, he would spare the city for the righteous sake. The Most High would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah if he could have found just 50 righteous people. The Most High couldn't find 50 righteous in two cities. The Most High saved eight people when he sent the flood. Israelites, I want you to see how narrow the road to life is. Today, Christianity, the largest religion in the world, have over 3 billion believers. Do you honestly believe 3 billion people is serving the God of Israel? If they were, that would be a record. Even when the word of God became flesh to lead the lost sheep of the house of Israel back to the father, his own people rejected him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Christians believe the word of God that became flesh is the most high the Father in the flesh. Yet he was rejected and continues to be rejected until this day. The most high said in the book of John that the world have rejected him. The father went as far as to say the world hates him. The scriptures warned the Israelites and said, If the world hate you, know that it hated me before it hated you. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. The Most High made it very clear in the scriptures that the world have rejected him. The world don't serve him. Christians serve the God of this world, which is Satan. How is it that over 3 billion people in this world proclaim to serve the God of Israel, yet in the awakening, as well as outside of the awakening, the Most High is having a hard time getting his own people that is called by his name to humble themselves and return to him. Do you honestly believe over 3 billion heathens and Israelites that have a history of serving idols serve the God of Israel today? Israelites, 3 billion is the broad road that leads to destruction. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. The Satans deceive many people to serve an idol disguised as the God of Israel in Christianity and other religions. The righteous that serve the God of Israel in this generation are serving the Father in the spirit and in truth. Christians are followers of Jesus Christ. That is their God that is posing to be the God of Israel. The Most High, the Father, said to his people by the Messiah that he want his people to follow him and to worship and serve him in the spirit and in truth. Christians cannot serve the God of Israel if they are followers and worshipers of Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Roman God that have stolen the identity of the Messiah and the God of Israel. The Satans have misled many to serve a false God pretending to be the God of Israel in Christianity. None of the religions of today serve the God of Israel. That is why the church is powerless against the kingdom of darkness. The father said through the Messiah that I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. In this generation, all kinds of unclean spirits are prevailing against the church. The people who are affiliated with religion are perishing in the beast system. For multiple generations, the Israelites and Gentiles have been crying out to the God of Rome in Christianity and their conditions remain the same. Their enemies continue to prevail against them. The Marine Kingdom have a stronghold on this generation. 
The workers of iniquity want us to believe over 3 billion people is following the God of Israel. The scripture said in the end times, the people will become even more wicked, just like in the days of Noah. Religion is making it seem as if millions are turning to the God of Israel every day. The scripture said in the last days, perilous times will come. People will be lovers of themselves and vanity will be at an all time high. This know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. The scriptures prophesied about the generation alive during the end time. The people will become more wicked than before. Even when they see the signs of the times, they will continue in their abominations and refuse to repent. In every generation, the population of the wicked outnumber the righteous. Israelites, the time have come for you to know the population of the righteous in every generation is not in the billions. If over 3 billion people serve the God of Israel, no weapon that is formed against this generation should prosper. The kingdom of darkness would have a hard time deceiving the people. However, the scripture said Satan have deceived the whole world. And the great dragon was cast out, an old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. If Satan deceived the whole world, then three billion is not serving the God of Israel. Currently in the beast culture, some people don't know if they are a woman or a man. Water spirits are influencing the people to partake in all sorts of sexual perversions. So many are struggling to keep a roof over their head, as well as to pay their monthly expenses. A great majority of people are living paycheck to paycheck. Some of these people are believers and followers of Jesus for multiple years. The scripture said in the book of Psalms, I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor begging. I have been young and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Some of us know at least a hundred Christians that cannot make ends meet. The scriptures in the Bible said, I have never seen the righteous forsaken or begging. Unfortunately, I have seen a lot of forsaken righteous Christians in my lifetime. The indigenous black people make up the largest population of the three billion believers. The indigenous black people can't seem to rise. Nobody can tell them about King Jesus. The time has come for you to open your eyes. Majority of people have been deceived in religion. They haven't seen the power of the Most High for themselves. Most people who profess to serve the God of Israel only know of his power through the scriptures and other people's testimony. When it comes to their own personal experience with the Father, majority of so-called Christians and Israelites have never had an encounter with the Father that could change their life. That is why the church is powerless. The people don't know the God of Israel or the word of God. Even in the awakening, many people don't know the God of Israel. Satan have drawn them to a false God imitating the God of Israel. Over 3 billion people in this generation do not serve the God of Israel. They serve the imitation. If 3 billion people in this generation pray without ceasing, like the scripture said, you will see how quickly the Satan's fall in the kingdom of the most high comes. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. If Christians truly serve the God of Israel, the church and the head leaders of the Christian faith would be Israelites. Today, heathens who share similar appearance with the seed of the fallen control all religion. If three billion truly serve the God of Israel, the righteous would be in power. When the righteous rule, the people rejoice. But when the wicked is in power, the people mourn. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The people have been mourning for a long time. The time have come for Israelites and Gentiles to come to the realization that they are serving another God in religion. 
you won't find the God of Israel in religion or the beast culture. The God of Israel can easily be found by you if you look for him with all of your heart. Israelites, the time have come for you to know what you worship. Let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. It would be wonderful if three billion people served the God of Israel. However, three billion is not serving the God of Israel in the spirit and in truth. The path to eternal life with the Father is very narrow. The scriptures inform us that many will find the way that leads to destruction. Israelites, don't be among the population of people who are on the broad road to destruction. The Most High is crying out to his people to hear him and return to him. Humble yourself and listen to the God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Israel. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which call thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect, I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee. Though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else.